Warning. This video contains scenes of bullying and violence which may be disturbing to some audiences. A girl transfers to the school where her brother was murdered to try to find the culprit, but ends up getting involved in a surprising conspiracy. The story begins by introducing us to Chan Mi, a high school athlete in her senior year who dreams of joining the army. However, she must first excel in a target shooting competition. She was close to securing first place when she was distracted by memories of a sad incident involving her twin brother, Park, which resulted in her finishing third. Last year, Park was involved in a mysterious accident. While planning holiday vacations over the phone, someone entered Park's room and distracted him, causing him to hang up. This was the last time Chan ever spoke to him. On the other hand, we meet Su Hyun, another student in his final year of high school. He works almost all day to support himself and pay for his hospitalized mother's bills. Despite her condition, she visits him occasionally, but the boy keeps his exhausting routine a secret. One day while making a delivery, he suffers a severe headache, collapses, and is rushed to the hospital. The doctor asks him to come back later as he has serious news to share. Chan, being an orphan, spent much of her life in an orphanage. She returns there and sees twin brothers taking a photo together, which reminds her of the time she had with Park. The police believe that the boy took his own life, but Chan doubts this. When visiting Park's grave, she encounters her adoptive parents who are very upset over the boy having done something so terrible to himself. Chan argues with them, asserting that wasn't what happened. She is determined to discover the truth and goes to the detectives handling the case, but finds out that the investigation has been closed, concluding the young man had taken his own life. Chan still refuses to believe this, as she knows someone else was in the room with her brother at the exact moment everything happened. The police only say they didn't find his phone. Days pass, and Su Hyun continues working tirelessly while Chan travels to her brother's school, where she will study this year to try to find the person responsible for taking Park's life. Despite working hard during the day, Su Hyun often attends a boxing gym at night, but ends up going too far in training after discovering that his motorcycle was stolen. His coach suggests he register for the next competition as it could earn him some money, but the young man refuses as he wants to focus on his studies. Chan arrives in the city and buys a motorcycle from two very suspicious guys, which happens to be the same vehicle that was stolen from Su Hyun. The boy sees Chan with his motorcycle and confronts her, but the girl manages to escape. Later, she tries to find a place to stay. Su Hyun manages to track his motorcycle and tries to retrieve it, but upon arrival, he finds the same thugs from yesterday trying to steal the vehicle again. The boy fights off the attackers but ends up receiving a blow to the head that nearly causes him to be run over by a driver using phone. Luckily, Chan appears just in time to save him and says they are now even. The next day, the two meet again, but again in a not very pleasant way. Chan ends up dirtying her uniform and Su Hyun kindly offers his jacket. Arriving at school, some girls gossip and speak ill of Chan for wearing a boy's uniform, but the girl simply ignores them and goes on with her life. She joins the target shooting club at school and later is introduced to her class. Unsurprisingly, Chan ends up in the same classroom as Su Hyun, who is not very happy about it. At lunchtime, Chan discovers that her brother's girlfriend has not returned to school since his death. Our protagonist manages to get the girl's number, but when she tries to call her, it is Su Hyun who answers the call. Chan is confused and decides to follow him. She ends up discovering that the boy has a brain tumor and doesn't have much time left. The next day, Chan notices that Su Hyun has not gone to school. She decides to go to the room where her brother died to find some clues, but ends up being surprised by Su Hyun, who reveals he was the first to see the lifeless body of Park. On the day of the incident, the boy says he saw the body when he was feeding a poor stray cat that lives there, and asks Chen to take care of the little animal in case something happens to him. At lunchtime, we meet a girl named Seon Ha, who was assaulted by a schoolmate, and to make matters worse, he returned to continue bothering her. The aggressor provokes the poor girl, causing her to drop all her lunch on the floor and run desperately. Chen argues with the bully, and he raises his hand to hit her. But a friend of the aggressor named Jaebum, who is as handsome as the protagonist, stops him. The shooting team coach appears and asks Chen to train Jaebum, who will be the new member of the team. At night, Su Hyun goes to meet Park's ex-girlfriend to return her phone, as she had lost it and he found it. She is confused by the numerous missed calls from Chan 
and an enigmatic message that Park left for her before dying. Back at school, Chan begins to train Jay Bum, but ends up being too harsh, which leaves the boy quite exhausted. She treats him very badly because she thinks he is just a typical rich kid who is training out of obligation. The girl is informed that this is not the case, as Jay Bum had recently returned to school after being in a coma for six months. After training, Jae Bum asks for her number. Su Hyun happens to pass by at that moment and sees the two talking and laughing. When Chan was arriving home, she catches Su Hyun suffering a severe headache caused by his brain tumor. The doctor had already warned of some symptoms such as mood swings and attitudes, in addition to several migraines, so Su Hyun just tries to endure as much as he can. The next day, the symptoms get even stronger, forcing him to leave the classroom to vomit. Chan gets worried and goes after him. When she arrives in the men's restroom, she notices there is blood on the floor and discovers it is from Sion Ha, the girl who was assaulted by the bullies. As they were the first to arrive at the crime scene, Chan and Su Hyun are interrogated, and the police suspect that the two have joined forces to solve the mystery surrounding Park's death. Chan asks the investigator to keep this a secret and states that she will find the person responsible for taking her brother's life. Kim, the father of the girl found in the restroom, arrives at the school furious at the culprit for having led his daughter to hurt herself. The principal prevents him from entering to avoid chaos. Chan receives a message from Park's supposed girlfriend setting up a meeting for that night. But when she arrives at the location, she realizes right away that it is not the girl, as she had seen her before. Tay, another student from Chen's class, reveals her face and shows she is a great friend of Park's ex-girlfriend. Chan demands to speak with Hong, but the girl insists she is after the wrong person. She even warns that if she wants to get some information, she will have to go after a girl named So Mi. Chan goes to talk to So Mi and discovers a lot of things, like the fact that Park was an extremely mean bully. Tae goes after Su Hyun to ask for help to get revenge on Yung, the bully who has been tormenting Seon Ha and made her want to take her own life. At this moment, we discover that Su Hyun had already taken revenge on bullies before, and it was precisely when Tae arrived at school. Everything had started at his old school when the girl was being bullied by a group of bullies mainly by two girls who physically and verbally assaulted her. She transferred to the current school, but the bullies also came, and the bullying only got worse. Su Hyun saw one of the attacks and was furious inside deciding to take revenge. On a normal day, he went to the group of aggressors and beat each one, mainly the girls. Su Hyun still forced them to apologize to Tae, who was seriously injured in the hospital. Tae wants Su Hyun to do the same thing for Seon Ha and offers money for him to do it. Initially, he refuses, but his financial situation is quite bad, so the boy doesn't have much choice but to accept. The revenge doesn't go as he expected, as shortly after forcing the aggressor to leave the school, he comes across a disturbing photo of Seon Ha, which Young was planning to release to everyone in order to force her to ask for a transfer. Su Hyun gets furious, and his mood changes completely. The boy grabs a hammer and starts beating Young's foot relentlessly. After the attack, he runs away and runs into Chan returning home. The two keep secret about what they were doing. The next day, Chan goes to visit Park's memorial. She is still very upset with what she discovered. Su Hyun is on the other side, also visiting his brother's tomb, Su Min, who died three years ago. We discover that he was a victim of an attack by bullies who humiliated him in front of everyone just minutes before causing the poor boy's death. Later, when Chan and Su Hyun arrive at school, they come across Young leaving in a wheelchair while everyone yells and insults him. The rumor of a masked hero defending the weaker students spreads through the school and everyone gets excited. While the boys were playing basketball, Chan is questioned by a girl named Hyun about her relationship with Su Hyun. She seems to have a crush on the boy and is very worried that Chan is dating him. Our protagonist says they have nothing and are not dating. During the game, Su Hyun ends up having an accident and hitting his head, caused on purpose by Oh Sung, who felt humiliated after being dribbled. Hyun gets furious and confronts Oh Sung, accusing him of having done it on purpose. The boy gets angry and goes after the girl but is stopped by other students. Hyun accompanies Su Hyun to the hospital and waits for him to wake up. He is very grateful for her attitude and decides to take the girl out to eat as gratitude. When they were leaving, they bump into Tae, who is totally disguised. Su Hyun recognizes her, but doesn't say anything. She had just gone to the hospital to see Sion Ha's father and inform him that the mission to avenge his daughter was completed. 
Chan meets with Oh Sung to ask some questions about her brother. But the boy just says that Park once helped him when he needed it, as they were friends. Oh Sung gets annoyed with the conversation and leaves quickly, but ends up forgetting his cell phone, so Chan follows to deliver it. Arriving at a huge mansion, she rings the doorbell and Hyun answers. Apparently the two are siblings, but they pretend they don't know each other at school. Hyung gets furious with Oh Sung and orders him to resolve this because she doesn't want the news about their kinship to spread. Tae meets with Seon Ha's father and picks up the money for the service Soo Hyun did. The man is so happy for the justice done that he even gives a little more. The next morning, the entire Sung and Hyun family eat together, but the boy decides to leave earlier to sort some things out with Chan. He confronts the girl and asks her not to tell anyone his secret. Later, the police arrive at school to investigate the appearance of the masked hero. All the students refuse to talk and send the authorities away. The investigators check the security cameras and discover that a student passed by on a motorcycle on a street behind the school on the night of the crime. Su Heon worries about being investigated, but acts as if he hadn't done anything. Chen decides to investigate Su Heon's house and finds shoes with blood, which he used on the day he took revenge on Young. Soo Hyun sees Chen leaving his house, but doesn't say anything. The poor boy continues to suffer from his severe headaches and bleeding. The police find out that the girl on the motorcycle is Chan, so they confront her, and she reveals that she saw Soo Hyun that night. They go talk to the boy and ask what he was doing. He refuses to talk. Before he could leave, the detective notices blood marks on his shoe. The next day, Su Hyun confronts Chen for breaking into his house and stealing the shoes he used on the day of the incident. She says she didn't report him and hands the shoe over to Su Hyun, who is grateful for the gesture and says that Park is not as she thinks. Chan is confused and begins to bother the boy to say something more. That night, Su Hyun was preparing to get rid of the things he used on the night of the incident. But on the way, he runs into the detective, who was there only to spend some time with her husband who is none other than the doctor who diagnosed Su Hyun's brain tumor. At school the next morning, Chan is lured to the auditorium and ends up being knocked out. The anonymous aggressor uses Chan's finger to unlock her cell phone. She is saved by Jai Bum and wakes up in the VIP room of a hospital. He's adorably concerned about her, and later we find out he timidly admits that his parents own the hospital and that her bill has already been paid. She still doesn't fully trust him, because she only tells that she was attacked later. When the thing about the cell phone becomes a problem, it turns out that whoever unlocked her phone used it to send a risque and, sorry, but hilariously photoshopped picture of Hyun around the school. As Chan deals with the consequences of this, which is a disaster and further arouses Hyun's hatred, we see j -Bum investigating the attack. The second he finds out about it from Chan, he uses all his connections and power to his advantage, watches CCTV footage, and seems to catch the culprit from the auditorium. Oh, Sung. Chan is increasingly involved in a mess, and as mysterious notes continue to appear in her locker, she is piling up enemies like crazy. And all of them want her out of the school, and will do anything to terrorize her all the way back to Busan. At this point in the story, we realize that Hyun is more than a spoiled child. She actually has a squad of delinquents at her disposal. She forces them to beat up Chan, which Su Hyun sees from his rooftop after a taciturn bath at the gym. Chan goes back to her house, but she has been reported, thanks to Oh Sung again, and is expelled. This is where Su Hyun shows up again, and, with all the trust he now places in her, he lets her stay in his apartment. It's here that we get a bunch of hugs we really needed. But as these two get closer, it only makes me more worried about the fate of both of them. Another anonymous note left in Chan's locker leads her to a school performance where a recording of her brother Park falling from the building leaves both students and detectives shocked. The certainty that Park was murdered resurfaces, and the police reopen the investigation. This is just the beginning of the explosive plot of Revenge of Others, a K-drama that will keep you glued to the screen. If you're already hooked on the story so far and haven't checked out this masterpiece, stop everything and go watch it now. Want to know the surprising ending? Comment I want below for exclusive spoilers. And if you've seen it and loved the ending, share your opinion without spoilers for other fans. Don't forget to tell us what you thought of the video format. After all, our channel is here to recommend the best dramas.
If you liked it, leave your like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you don't miss our next exciting scene. A kiss and see you next thrilling scene.